Good morning, we are on Daf Membeis Amud Beis 42B, Membeis Amud Beis. So we are, the context is, the mission is telling us about the speech, the more the mission are discussing the speech, that the Koyan God, that the Koyan Meshuach Muhammad, the Koyan anointed for this purpose, would give to the people before they went to battle. And two messages in his speech. The first speech he tells the people, right? The first speech he tells the people, don't be afraid, God's with you. And the second speech he tells people who are exempt from going to battle to go home. Now the missionary, uh, in, in telling us about the speech, gave us two examples of, of times in history where this the message he relays is, is has been played out. Right, the message he says is, Hashem is with you, so don't be afraid. So the Gemara gives an example, the Mishnah gives the example of Goliath and Shoivach, two warrior champions. And the Gemara's language is, they come with the championship of swords and spears and Goliath, and we come with the championship of Hashem. I, I was actually thinking about it because it, it's kind of strange that the, that the Mishnah does this because it doesn't seem to me like though that's part of the speech. It doesn't seem to me that part of the speech is, remember this Pelishtim and we were successful with Goliath? If someone sees a source that said that this is part of the oh, speech, yeah, uh, let me know. Because I'll tell you why I don't think it's part of the speech. Said it because of the dating. Of well, first of all, the dating. The mitzvah to give the speech goes back to the... Well, well, before, goes back to the well, beginning. It's it, Moshe Rabbeinu says to give the speech, which means every battle till King David, which is in a couple hundred years, with tons of battles during the Shoftim, but I've also had the speech. So maybe it was added later, but it's certainly not part of the primary mitzvah. Number one. Number two, we already learned that the main halacha we're trying to relay here is that the Kayan has to give the speech in the original Hebrew, which means he has to read the text of the Torah itself. The text of the Torah itself in Devarim, written by Moshe Rabbeinu, does not include any story about Pelishtim or Goliath, which happens centuries later. And notwithstanding all that, the Mishnah inserts it. Almost as if the Mishnah is speaking to us, the reader, not so much to the mitzvah. Which is unusual for a Mishnah to do that. Mishnah usually is, sticks to like halacha. Right? Yeah. But the Mishnah inserts these examples, like almost relaying a message to us, the readers. Unless the Mishnah is indicating that the, it's by the Kayan's discretion to use points in history to make his point even further once he's already fulfilled the obligation to read the Hebrew. That's possible. And the, Gemara's, the Mishnah is giving examples that the Kayan could use. Right, because he has to be the original Hebrew. That that was the point of this Mishnah, right? Anyway, hey, interesting. Okay, so uh, what was it? Friday, we learned chapter seventeen of the book of Shmuel Aleph, which told us the story of David and Goliath. Now the Gemara is going to comment on that story. So it's uh, how many lines from the top? It's one, two, three, four, five lines from the top. After the colon, says the Gemara. Pelishtim bo benitzchene shal Goliath chulu. The Gemara, as it always does, cites to the Mishnah and quotes the relevant passage, which is, the Mishnah states that the Philistines, the Pelishtim, come with the championship of Goliath, and we come with the championship of Hashem, and that's why we're successful. And as we saw from the entire story, everybody's all freaking out because there's this giant that's calling out the Jewish people, and one little young man named David says, uh, I'm not stressed, we have Hashem. Yeah, it's after, it's at the last one, the Don Moses said, it's last uh, Mesefta, the book there. So it says the Gemara, Goliath, with respect to Goliath, to Goliath, Amr Abiyachin, Abiyachin stated, he is cited as an example, Sha'amad begiloi ponim. Translated literally, he stood with a revealed face. As it actually translates for us, it means chutzpah. But chutzpah in the language of the Gemara is giloi ponim, a brazen face. Right? What, what, what's the vart of chutzpah? The vart of chutzpah is to, is to uh, state your strength where it's inappropriate, to state your, it, it's a revealed face, meaning you can have what you think, but then when you inappropriately express it, that's the chutzpah. That's chutzpah, chutzpah is gilipanim. Great, oh, 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 reveal your face, meaning 
it could be sometimes you're not even saying anything. It's chutzpah. You show up to where you're not supposed to. It's chutzpah. Right? And you show up uninvited. So the Gemara's terminology to describe chutzpah is a brazen face. And Goliath was chutzpah towards Hashem. Right? Hashem gave him strength. But he expressed it inappropriately. Toward whom? Before God himself. Shinemar, as the verse reads, right? We read this on Friday. Goliath comes and uh, challenges the Jewish people to choose a champion. And the way he says it is, ish. Choose for yourself a man. Let him come down to me. So the way in which he, the terminology uses to describe choosing a champion is ish. Comments of Yechelon, the ain ish Ella Kadesh Baruch Hu. When he says, choose for yourself a man, an ish, this is a reference to Hashem, to God. So in other words, he's almost saying, right? Which... Okay, let's just translate literally and we'll see what we have here. Shenem, as the verse reads, Hashem ish Mohammed, right? The Pasuk refers to God as a man of war. Ish, a man of war. So when Goliath says, choose for yourself an ish, a man, he means... Choose for yourself a meaning. Bring God here. I'm, I'm okay taking on God. What's that supposed to mean? People will get to that. And we had a similar thing with the um, Meraglim. When we learned about the Meraglim here in Saita, we said that the Meraglim challenged God's ability to take the land. Right? And we discussed what that might mean. So perhaps it's a similar thing, and we'll share that in a moment. Yeah. Let's see the Gemara on a literal level. Omar Kadosh Baruch Hu, God, Omar Kadosh Baruch Hu. So God says in response... He's challenging man, me. Hareni mapiloi, I will uh, make him fall. Ayad benish through the son of man. Shenemar, as the verse reads, when describing David as he shows up to the scene, right? He came on his father's behest to find out how his brothers are doing, right? We read that on Friday. The, the verse says, "With David ben ish Ephrasi hazeh," and David. Is this man, is this son of the man of Ephras? So, Goliath challenges a man, and Hashem sends the son of man. Yeah? So, is the son of man, is the man referred to, okay, so, this is the end of the Gemara. Let's, now, let's think about this. Is the son of man referred to by the Pasuk? Who's the man that David is the son of? Who's the man? If it's Father Yishai. But in the context of this discussion, who's man? Hashem is man. So Hashem says, he wants to challenge me, man. I'm sending him son of man. Mm. So what's, what's being stated here? Presumably, Hashem, he's challenging me. I'm going to send him my, a lower level. So whatever he's challenging and represented by Ish, I'm sending him a lower level, Ben Ish. It's going to take him down. Yeah? So what does, that, does this mean? What does it mean, Hashem? What does it mean that he's challenging Hashem? And um, what does this mean that Hashem is sending the son of Ish? The son of man. Anybody's a son of man, right? Everybody, every human is a son of a man. All right, so there's something unique about David being referred to in the Pesach as Ben Ish, other than the fact that you're going to, we have to assume that the Ish that Goliath is challenging is the same Ish that is the father of the Ben Ish, David. Presumably, good morning. Good morning. All right, and join us. Thank you. So perhaps something like this. We know that humanity is referred to in more than one name. Right? You have Adam, Anoish, Gever, Ish, different names. And each name indicates a different uh, aspect of being a human. Right? And Ish, universe usually, represents the emotional capacity. The emotional capacity. So here, when Hashem is referred to as a warrior, he's referred to as Ish, as a man, as as the word as not Adam or Gever, but Ish. So ish represents um, emotions. The Fisichla Yehulal Ish, Yehulal is represent, representative of the emotions, also referred to as Ish. This is explained to this many times that Ish represents the emotional 
capacity. In uh, in in the Svitas, right, man is created an image of God. So we we look at the structure of humanity. We see it mirrors the, the structure of Hashem's divine manifestation. So Ishten would refer to what's referred to in the Kabbalah as Zah. Zeir Anpin. It's the divine emotional attributes as opposed to divine intellectual attributes or the divine creative force, which would be Malchus. But Ish represents the divine attributes, the divine emotions. So what's Gali is saying? Gali is saying, I'm challenging that level of the divine. Why is that? Because divine attributes are what is what are responsible for the system that exists in this in this world. Shem creates a system in this world. And in this world, there's the attribute of chesed. And in this world, there's the attribute of gvura. And in this world, there's the attribute of war. War is an element of that. And by your design of war, I have more power than the Jewish people. That's the design you made. So I'm challenging ish. Whatever it is, whatever divine energy that's responsible for war in this world, I'm the one, I'm the warrior here. I've made that way. I'm taller, I'm bigger by your design. So what does Hashem say? Hashem says, I'm going to send you Benish that's going to take you down. What's Benish? So Benish is Malchus. David is Malchus. It's the son of the emotional attributes. It means to say it's the next level. What's the next level down after the emotional attributes? It's the level of Malchus, which, can, which David is Malchus. It's explained many times. So this explains it for a great length of David Malchus. Projection. Oh, and Malchus is projection. So you have the divine attributes, and then Malchus is that which projects those divine attributes into creation. So Malchus is responsible for taking all the divine energy and then man projecting it within creation. So what does Malchus represent? The final divine nature. So Hashem says, you think that your strength you're, you're claiming your greater strength because you have the divine attributes. So I, I want you to know, all my divine attributes go through my divine projection to this world. And by my projection to this world, they are more powerful than you. Not only, meaning not only, do, not only is it, it's in words like this, it's not as if Hashem says, you're claiming that by natural order you win, but the Jews are beyond nature. Hashem is saying even within nature that you wins, so long as you remember where it comes from. So as long as you have David claiming that the that strength comes from Hashem, even when the nature is beyond, even Benish, even this, even at the lower level than, than the divine association you're you're invoking, even the lower level with as divine energy is embedded in nature, never mind the divine attributes as they transcend nature, but even as they are projected within nature, still you're gonna you're gonna fall to that. Because even nature itself is designed for the service of Hashem as it comes through the Yid. So even Benish, even lower level, will take you down. Perhaps that's what this means here. Okay. More commentary from Rabbi Echen on the story of Goliath and David. Amr Rabbi Echen, Rabbi Echen says, Mishim Rabbi Meir in the name of Rabbi Meir. Mishlam Rabbi Mekaymas, in three incidents, locked to Piv Lo'ise Rasha. The mouth of that wicked one struck himself. I mean, he himself predicted his own downfall in three instances. So, yeah. Okay. Echad, the first is, the verse we quoted earlier, Biru lachem ish, he says, choose, choose for yourself a champion. V'yedad alai, and he should come down to me. So Rashi says, this choice of words, V'yedad alai, come down to me. Um, also can be read by Yed Alai, which means come down upon me. Right? The, 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 two people are, the, the two nations are standing on the mountains and they're the, they're, he's telling them to come down to the valley. So, by Yed Alai, come down upon me. Because what he should have said is, let him come uh, and battle with me. He should battle with me. But he didn't use the word with me. He said to me, a lie, which can also be read as a lie upon me. So in, the, in his words of challenge itself, He's alluding to the fact that he's going to be taken down. That's point time one. The idach and the second time is iti. If you will able to battle me, vikani and strike me, etc. 
he says like this, if this person comes down, can battle with me and strike me, then we will become slaves to you Jewish people. And if I strike him, we sh you shall become slaves to me. So he, he, to begin with, indicates the possibility of being taken down. As opposed to saying, let him come battle with me, battle with me, not come down upon me, but let him come battle with me and I will surely take him down. Right? It's, yeah. But he says, if you guys can do it, it's in the taunting itself that he indicates that there's a possibility of him losing. Right? The Edoch, and the third one is the Carmel of David. He tells King David when David comes and right, David puts on the armor and then he throws it off. He says, This is so awkward, and goes with his just with his uh, five stones and the slingshot. King David's uh, Gol Goliath says to David, Am I a dog? Get the ball, but Maklis, that you're coming to me with stones. Yeah, so this is um, the third time where he refers to himself as a dog that can be taken down by, by stone. What do all these three things have in common? It's, it's, it's the arrogance to describe the preposterous nature of what could happen. Right? In other words, if he came and said, look, I'm stronger than you guys, I'm going to take you down. That's the sense of honesty. But then when he goes on to like uh, describe himself losing in this preposterous nature, it's like it's it's the Achilles heel. It's it's the it's the the arrogance of himself assuming the preposterous nature of him losing in and of itself, a prediction of his loss. Right? And the Gemara says, but David, Nami Omar Le, David also said, etc. King David also states, he also says, you're coming to me with uh, with sword, with, what's the word you used? Shoot. No. For oh, the spear, what was the fancy spear, word? Javelin. javelin. You come to me with a sword and a javelin and a, and a knife. And I come to you with Hashem, right? So the Gemara says, well, here too, he's describing Goliath, just like Goliath said to David, you come challenge me, and if you win, I'm I'm slave to you. And that, the Gemara said, is him predicting his own demise. King David also said, you're coming to me with spirit and sword. But says the Gemara, but right after what he says, I'm coming to you with the name of Hashem, Lord of hosts. The, the, the legions of the Jews that you have shamed. Right? What's the difference between what King David said and what he said? Other than the fact that David invokes Hashem. But in terms of... You follow, following my question here? The Gemara says like this. Like, Goliath said to David, if you guys win, I'm slaves to you. If you win, I, if I win, you're slaves to me. So says the Gemara, the fact that he opened up by saying, if, I, if you win, you're slaves to, I'm slaves to you, that's a prediction of his own demise. So the Gemara asked, King David said the same thing. King David said, you come with swords, I come with God. So did he not start off by saying his success? The Gemara says, oh, but because he concluded by saying, but I'm coming with God, therefore it's not the same as Goliath. How? How's that? Right? So, explains, let's look at Rashi's words on the side. Rashi says, Ein zu psichas pelera. Him saying that you're coming to me with sto with a sword and javelin, that is not considered opening up with his own demise. Why? Because Dov is telling him, You're coming to me with something that has no value. I'm coming with the one who's, in whose hand victory lies. Coming with Hashem. So here's the difference between King, between David and, and Goliath. Goliath is acknowledging that that they have that the Jewish people have some sort of power, right? But describes as preposterous that your power would overpower my power. With King David, says to begin with, you have no power. So when King David, when David says that you have a uh, sword and javelin, he's not saying you have sword and javelin, but my sword and javelin is greater than yours. He's saying you have sword and javelin. That's nothing. It, 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 it counts for nothing. And if it's not a description of him losing, it's not a description of King David winning, but it's a description of Goliath's uh, inherent uh, no value. Right? So Goliath describes the possibility of losing and describes it as preposterous. David doesn't describe the possibility of losing. He describes the nothingness of what he has. This is, this is what Ashi seems to be saying.
Okay, and yet, and yet, it's it's still hard to like pinpoint exactly what the difference is. He's still describing, but what what what, what should have he said? What should have Goliath said? What's really the difference in what's happening? So maybe if we're talking about the internal struggle between our godly soul and our animal soul, which we talked about King David and Goliath is like that. The Goliath is the dramatic animal soul is telling you this is a bait, right? The animal soul can never claim that what you're coming with the godly soul is nothing. The animal soul just say this is better. This is better. So by the very fact that the struggle in your head says, look, what I'm offering is better, itself indicates that what your cup that the godly soul has something to offer. And we said, what's it offering? And but in response, what's the godly soul say to the animal soul? Oh, you have something of value, but I have something of greater value. There's a whole the whole your whole sale is empty. Your whole sale is empty. It's a different, it's a different, uh, a different negotiation. It's very similar to what we're talking about. Um, on, on Friday. It's not as if um, King David comes with armor and a spear and no negotiations. He comes with a simple, pure truth. This is what it is, bullseye to the head, and that's it. So it's it's a clarity of, it's like the Gemara is giving us a secret to how to win the battle. Be clear on what's real and what's not real. Don't get confused. The world has something real to offer and Torah has something real to offer and I'm not sure how to balance it, I'm not sure how to deal with it. And then the... the the animal comes and says, you know, but your offering is very good, but I have much more. Get 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 clear on what's real and what's not real. God is real, everything else is not. Set to end the conversation. You don't have to get all complicated about what's real and what's more valuable, what's less valuable. That itself is the beginning of the downfall when you start to acknowledge that there's something, there's something in the challenge that actually has some value. As soon as you understand that the challenge has no value whatsoever, it's just a mirage, now you won. But when you assume that your enemy has some sort of va- has some sort of value, now you're beginning to lose. You've already opened up the door for your enemy to win you, even if you think you can overcome. There's perhaps the Gemara's message encoded in here, and the difference between Megalius communicates how he thinks he's going to win the way versus the way David does. David is very clear. It's not about strength. It's not about dynamism. It's not about any of that. It's about clear understanding of not being confused about the truth. He's looking around, the people panicking. He's like, I'm not sure why are you guys panicking. So there's a big gullies. And therefore, <laughs> Hashem is on our side. That's the beginning of the story. So, this is what I have to do. This is where I have to go. And what this has to offer is nothing. You have nothing to offer. Where Goliath's attitude is, you have what to offer, but you already lost. You already lost. Hmm? Yeah. That's right. And it gets it gets also to this idea of David being the Ben Ish, being the level of Malchus. The level of Malchus is be, as you described, the, the capacity of projection is the is the most is, is humility. It's all about humility. Because Malchus doesn't have anything of its own. It projects whatever it's given. That's the that's the quality of Malchus, the quality of speech. It's a pure vessel. It's a pure vessel. It's a what do you want, Hashem? That's it. And that's this whole theme. That's the whole Lush theme here. Just, like the it's, just, oh, very good. It's, it's a theme of Lush and Kodesh. It's a theme of speaking the words of Hashem as they are unadulterated. I'm just a vessel. That's it. That's David's, that's David's quality. That's David's quality. It's humility. It, it, the way the way uh, the king is described is Ain al Gab of El Hashem Alakov, nothing above him but God. So one way to look at it is nothing above him but God because he's the highest in the land. But the true way to look at it is he's the kind of person who responds to nothing but Hashem. Money's not above him. Power's not above him. Fame is not above him. He doesn't answer to any of these things. I said this by the Fabrengans. We say, we sing all dramatically on during, during 10 days of repentance. Our father, a king, with no other king but you. Who, 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 which king are we negating nowadays? We're not, we're not negating Justin Trudeau. Nobody cares about him. At least not that much. Like, so who exactly, like, no other king but you, Hashem, who are we negating? Y- your king is your highest value you respond to. That's your king. So many people have the have a king of money. Some people have a king of fame. 
and they have to respond to that 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 that, that king. And if they don't, the king punishes them. Right? I mean, they, they don't respond to their perceived version of what honor is, and they lose out on honor if they don't tout tout to this. They get and a Jew says, I, I don't I don't respond to anybody. I only have one king. Nothing above him but Hashem alone. That's what we're responding. Everything else, I'm not impressed. That's that's the quality of Malchus. I, I don't have anything. Whatever you Hashem want, that's what I transmit. Everything else, I'm just not impressed. The biggest Goliath, I'm not impressed. Swords and spears, still not impressed. And that's the perhaps what the Gemara is telling us here, the difference between Goliath versus King David. And David is no negotiation. Everything you're saying, it's all smoke and mirrors. Not impressed. Whereas Goliath is coming back and saying, well, I'm stronger and maybe, you know, this is, might be better. Try it this way. Try it that way. It's the, it's the drama of what could be and what should have been and what's supposed to be. And David has a clarity. I'm sorry? Is there anything related to the method that King David uses to bring Goliath down this whole idea of the hook stones and the slingshot? I was thinking about it. So I don't know the answer. Why that? But I, I, a, a well. I one thing I thought of is one thing I could uh, can just on a on a like a somewhat geographical spiritual level, right? Malchus is is the ability to, is speech, right? It's projection. Okay. So, yeah, oftentimes associated with that is the letter Hey, right? Actually, not often, always associated with that. This letter Hey of Hashem's name, the last letter of Hashem's name, Hey is Malchus. Hey is also. Um, it's it, the letter hey, the way you pronounce it is an undefined letter. It's right, it's 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 the breath itself before it's defined, right? And how is it defined? How do you define this the breath that comes out of your mouth? What what so this calls the hey motor sape, the five uh, parts of the mouth that break down uh, the sound into letters. Um teeth, tongue, palate, cheeks, lips. No, sorry, uh no no, no. cheek, no. Teeth, tongue, lips, palate, throat. Right. Sorry, those are the five. Him the five parts of the of the of the mouth that break down the, the direct yeah. the, break down the sound into the various different specific sounds. And in many other ways, number five slash hey is associated with malchus. So that could be why it's five stones. Just a guess on that regard. What? That's fun. Yeah, perhaps that's why it's five stones. I can't tell you, but I'm wondering why slingshots and these. I, I, projection. Maybe that's the idea that the Malchus is a projection. projection. Yeah. You said projection. Yeah. And it's to take what you have and project it outward. And it's also that's very interesting. It's also a slingshot doesn't have anything of its own. It receives, and then whatever it receives is what it projects. <laughs> yeah. Like Malchus. So maybe that's the association there. Very good. Okay, tomorrow, Bezos Hashem. We're going to get to more details. You, you might remember from Friday that the Gemara describes, uh, that the Pasuk describes King gave, uh, Goliath's preparation for war. Wakes up early, stays up at night, and 40 days. So why does he do all that? And we're going to see he's trying to uh, counteract Jewish spiritual energy, Jewish spiritual, sorry, to make it work in his favor. So maybe that's what it is. I and mean, the Gemara is going to say that's what it is, and we'll see right, if it somehow connects what we're saying today. That even suggests some subservience. Yeah, so we're going to get into that by this show tomorrow, 100%. Okay, have a wonderful day, Eden.